Hello guys, it's Johnny time and welcome to another smart contract hacking tutorial. Today we're gonna solve together the second challenge of Dem Vulnerable DeFi, which is the naive receiver. Dem Vulnerable DeFi is an amazing capture the flag challenge to practice smart contract hacking. And if you missed my previous video of the first challenge, you can check it out. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So in the second challenge, the naive receiver one, there is a landing pool offering quite expensive flash loans of Ether, which has 1000 ETH in balance, the landing pool. You also see that there is a user that deployed a smart contract with, N with 10 Ether in balance, yet is capable of interacting with the landing pool and receiving flash loans of ETH. You need to drain all the ETH funds from the user's contract. Doing it in a single transaction is a big plus. So we are not attacking the landing pool, but we are attacking the users that is using the landing pool to execute flash loans. And if we can do it in one transaction, is a big plus. So let's go through the code and see how we can exploit this uh, user. Now you can go to the contracts, naive receiver, or you can go to the test and see the test file. So if we go to the test file, we can see the setup, that in the setup there is 1000 ether in the pool, there is 10 ether for the user, there is some kind of setup going on here, uh, deploying the lender pool factory and the flash loan receiver factory, then sending the ETH to the pool and to the user that is executing flash loans. Now here is our exploitation section where we need to write our exploit. And eventually after our exploitation, the receiver is supposed to have zero balance and the pool is supposed to be the initial ether pool balance plus the user, the receiver balance. So how we exploit it. So by navigating through the smart contracts, we can see first the naive receiver lender pool. So this is a smart contract that provides the flash loans. And you can see this is the fee. The fee is one ETH. So every flash loan will need to be paid back with plus one ETH. And here there is the flash loan function. It gets a borrower and the amount. The borrower is an address and the amount is unsigned integer 256 bits and it's external no entrant, no, re no re-entrant. You can see the balance before. It first check that it has enough balance in the pool. So the borrow amount is lower or equal the balance before. Then it verifies that the address, the, the borrower that wants to borrow money is a smart contract because that's how the pool supports flash loans. And then it calls to external function of the borrower function. It basically triggers the borrower dot function call with value. So it sends the ether, the borrow amount that the borrower is asking to borrow and it triggers the receive ether function. So this is the borrower function, the smart contract that will borrow and execute a flash loan. And then eventually it will require that the borrower will pay back the loan. So it checks that the balance that this pool has, the lending pool has, is higher or equal than the balance that it had before, plus the fixed fee, which is one ETH. Now we are not supposed to attack the smart contract, but we're supposed to attack the flash loan receiver, which is the user that is implementing and using the flash loans and this is this guy over here and we can see this is the receive receive ether function that was implemented the function that is being called by the landing pool and in this function the user receives the fee and then it checks that the message sender is the pool so only the send the pool the landing pool can call this function it set it up here on the constructor then it calculates the amount to be repaid which is the ETH that was sent to this function plus the fee which is one ETH then it checks that basically he has enough balance to pay the loan if not he reverses and, re and reverses the transaction so he checks that it's greater than amount to be paid then it calls the function execute action during flash loan and it does nothing and it sends back the ETH. That's quite simple, quite obvious. Now our goal is to make, to drain all the funds from this user to the landing pool. Now do you have any ideas how to do it? If you do, pause the video, try to do the challenge by yourself and let's see. So the solution over here is quite obvious and straightforward. We can just call this flash loan function in the landing pool with the borrower, the address will be the flash loan receiver address, the user that we want to exploit and the borrow amount will be zero. So every time we will call this function, it will force a flash loan for the user of amount of zero, which means that the user will ask to borrow zero ETH, but he will pay back one ETH because he's paying back the amount that he asked to borrow plus 
the fee, okay? So we can simply do it by writing 10 transactions because every time we need to drain the 10 ETH and every time we will be able to drain one ETH because this is the fee. So we can simply write a JavaScript code in our test file to send 10 transactions and this is the first solution that we're gonna see. Guys, I wanted to share with you something super exciting and new. I've created a complete, practical, smart contract hacking course, accumulating 12 years of my cybersecurity and blockchain experience. Without exaggerating, this is your holy grail, all-in-one course, which will instantly help you kickstart your career in smart contract hacking and security, making you the most demanded professional with insanely high salaries. Get exposed to tons of knowledge by signing up in the description below. So we're gonna define a for loop for, now we need to call 10 times the flash loan function on behalf of the user. So we're gonna write await this.pool connect attacker because we're gonna call this transaction from the attacker and we're gonna call the flash loan function flash loan and the borrower is going to be the user so it's going to be this receiver dot address and the amount is simply going to be zero okay so it's quite easy quite straightforward and now it will execute 10 transactions in every one it will execute a flash loan of zero on behalf of the receiver and eventually it's supposed to drain its balance so i had a typo and thought we need a double n in the connect but let's execute and see if it works yarn naive receiver and we can see that the exploit was successful the test was passed and we were able to complete the challenge but remember there is a bonus if we can do it in a single transaction it's a big plus because now we did it in 10 different transactions we want to execute it in one single transaction do you have any idea how we can do it in one single transaction you are absolutely right we need to write a smart contract contract and implement the same functionality inside a smart contract and that's how you will be able to execute this functionality in only single transaction so we're going to create a new smart contract we can call it naive receiver attacker dot so and we're going to copy just for the sake of the simplicity we're going to copy some lines of code the solidity and the create a new smart contract and we'll call it <clears throat> naive receiver attacker we don't need to inherit from any smart contract but the first thing we need to do is declare declare an inter interface for the lender pool so we'll call interface i pool and we need to define the function that we're going to call which is the flash loan function so we're going to write an interface for this function now we want to call the flash loan function from our attacker smart contract so we'll define the pool in the beginning and then we'll define the constructor which will get address and let's call it pool address and we will set the pool to equals the interface of the pool and we need to, hear, to add it payable so we can send ETH to this kind of smart contract. Now we'll define the attack function that will get the victim as parameter so function attack it gets an address we call it victim and it's external and what we need to do same functionality a for loop right so for and u int i i lower than 10 and i plus plus now every single iteration we need to call the flash loan function with the victim so we're gonna do pool dot flash loan with victim and zero quite easy right that's it that's our code this is our smart contract that's gonna attack the receiver and let's try to execute it so now since all the functionality is already in smart contract we just need to deploy our attacker contract and execute the attack function so we're gonna just copy this kind of example over here but instead of lender pool factory we're gonna call it um, attacker factory and instead of neighbor server lender pool it's neighbor server attacker and we'll deploy it from the attacker address now we need to deploy the smart contract so we'll call this kind of transaction 
We're just going to change the lender pool factory to attack the factory. And this time in the, upon deployment, we need to supply the address of the pool address. So we're going to send it on the constructor. We're basically going to send here this dot pool dot address. Once we deployed, instead of this pool, we call this attacker contract. And now that the contract is deployed, we want to call the attack function with the victim as the parameter. So we're going to write await this attacker contract dot attack. And we're going to call the this dot receiver dot address. So the JavaScript will deploy the malicious smart contract, call with all their necessary parameters in the constructor, then call the attack function with the receiver as the victim. We'll run yarn naive receiver and let's see if it works. Perfect, the test passed through, the attack, the exploit was successful and we were able to drain all the users ether with one transaction. Quite easy, right? So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer every single question. Thank you for learning with me and I will see you in the next tutorials. Bye-bye.